Hi there. Today we're going to be having a look at the ISG Max from Lincoln Link. So the Lincoln Link ISG Display Max, $219 US, and it looks like there's some additional things that you can add on, like an Ethernet adapter, an e remote, an e motion, etc. Uh, communication protocols here we've got Wi Fi, Zigbee, Meta, Bluetooth, 433, and infrared. It does have an add on store which is separate to the Home Assistant. This has its own version of Home Assistant. It's not the full version that you would download and install yourself from what I can see. Um, it's got an energy efficiency uh, dashboard. And if we scroll down and we have a look at the specs of this, it's an eight core device. It's got four gigs of RAM, uh, 32 gigs of storage, a touch screen. It's got a five volt, two amp power supply, which does come with the device uh, we've talked about the connectivity um, you can plug an SD card in the back and we have two other connections we have a USB A and a USB C we've got a brightness sensor um, scrolling down here further it's telling us we can connect with uh, Tuya local control um, it's got a remote control software local automation local backup energy monitoring camera camera monitoring Supported brands over two and a half thousand, um, which includes connecting to Google, um, Amazon Alexa, Amazon HomeKit, and Siri. Um, the screen size it's a 10 inch, 1280 by 800, and the processor is 1.8 gigahertz. So, having a look at what came in the box, we've got this little 2 amp power supply, nice and neat. It's got a New Zealand plug on it. And that has got a USB to some sort of a barrel jack connector. Then we have this little stand, which is effectively a desktop stand that we can use to stand the device on. Having a look at the Lincoln Link itself. So we've got this touch screen. Um, it's got a little, I think this is the light sensor that is designed uh, to adjust the brightness of the screen. Then on the back, we've got a button, an on off button. We've got this magnetic uh, patch that will allow you to fix it onto this over there like that. So you can stand it up. On we this side over here, we have our DC power in over here. We've got a USB-C, uh, we've got a USB port, and we've got an SD card. On the back here, we've got a speaker. Now there is a reasonable amount of a standoff so that if you were to mount this up against the wall, it would certainly not be flat against the wall. So I've created this really bad drawing to try and give you a bit of an idea of what's going on here. So we have an Android operating system and on this we have a home automation system called the ISG. ISG has got a Zigbee and Wi-Fi radios, Bluetooth, etc. And that can connect to devices. It can also display dashboards and it can run automations. Secondly, we have a local version of Home Assistant running in a container. And this can also be connected to via the ISG. Along with that, we have a separate container with some add-ons running separately from Home Assistant. Now, in addition to this, we can actually create a connection to our own home assistant that might be running on a Raspberry Pi within our house. I hope this has made it a little bit more clear. So having a look at the dashboard here, we've got two dashboards. We've got a home dashboard and we've got a Simon dashboard. And I can go along and I can switch these switches on and off, as you can see. Now, the next tab along here is the devices tab. Now this is how we go and we add new devices. So we click the plus icon. What this now does is open up the method for adding new devices to the ISG system. So we might, for example, want to add a Wi-Fi device and we might want to make a tour device. So we can then switch between or select between lights, outlets, door sensors, temperature, humidity, or camera, and we can go along once it adds it into the ISG system, it then goes and adds it into the Home Assistant, the one that is situated 
within this device as well. Similarly, I could go along and I could add a Zigbee device. Now, the interesting thing with this is when you add a Zigbee device, it's actually going to drive us back to Home Assistant and it's going to add the device into Home Assistant directly. Now, the reason for this is that the Zigbee radio within this device can either be connected to the ISG system or to the Home Assistant system. And when you migrate from the one to the other, it will permanently be set in that mode. So you need to think about where you're wanting to add them. You could then say, is it an IoT device, for example? And once again, you can select your devices. Thirdly, you might want to say, I want to add a Matter device. Uh, with Matter, we only have two options at the moment, lights or outlets. Now, the next option you can do is you can go to your Home Assistant and actually add a device from your Home Assistant to the ISG dashboard. So you might want to add, for example, this one over here, and that would then add that to the local dashboard. And then finally, you can select adding webcams. If we select there, you can add RTSP stream webcams. So that is the method of adding devices to the ISG and it then goes back and adds them into the Home Assistant system or you can add them into the Home Assistant system first and then bring them back into the ISG dashboard. Um, next up we have groups so it's pretty straightforward you can go and create groups and add devices assign them to groups. We've got energy management I haven't added anything yet but you could go along here and you could select your energy devices and create a little dashboard. We then have brands um, over here. This basically refers to the link and link devices. If you do, I don't have any link and link devices to add in here. Next up, we've got automations. So these are automations that you're gonna create within the ISG device. So if we click on this one, um, we can go in there and you can see what this one's doing is it is at eight o'clock on weekdays do this action on the Shelly and we could easily go and create another one there you can see the little thing so effectively you create a trigger you then go and create an action and you can have various conditions that can be met so it's a basic um, automation tool that you can create in the ISG system next we have add-ons so this is where the add-ons are based. So you don't have add-ons within your home assistant that is in within um, the system. Your add-ons are in this section over here. So here we have add-ons for things like Broadlink. Um, we have add-ons for a um, home assistant. We have add-ons for uh, Z-Wave, Zigbee to MQTT, Node-RED, System Monitor. And you can add any of these and then they will run as an add-on because the Home Assistant within the system doesn't have access to add-ons. We scroll down to the bottom one. This is our settings. And this is where you can link up to things like HomeKit, Home Assistant, uh, your services within Home Assistant. Um, you can do your backups and restores. So I'm assuming this is backup and restores of the ISG system because within Home Assistant, you would be doing your own backups. You've also got your media center, so you could go along there and add various media uh, components to your system to be played with. And it seems over here, if you want to do your MQTT, you would set that up from within there. Having a look at the Home Assistant instance within this device, um, you can see our overview. We've got our dashboard here, looks pretty simple. We can go along there and we can control devices from our dashboard. Similarly, we can go in there and obviously edit dashboards and very, very much standard home assistant. Uh, energy dashboard, once again, same thing, maps, all pretty standard. The logbook, history, um, does have the hack store pre-installed. So that's quite nice. You don't actually have to go down and install hacks yourself. Uh, media pretty much the same as a normal home assistant, to-do lists, developer tools, and settings. So now that we're in our settings, we can go along here and we can have a look, see 
which actual um, system we're on. So currently it is running 2024 3.3. So effectively you're running the March instance of Home Assistant. So it is sort of, what are we now, October. So we're sort of a fair bit back from the latest release. But that's the system that they're running. You can't upgrade this within it. Um, you would have to wait for them to actually um, update the system before you can update it yourself. You can't actually go and update this one directly. Now, as I discussed, add-ons, there's no add-on store because the add-on store is within the other side of the system. So amongst the settings here, we do have the firmware update for the system. And as you can see, there's three areas that you can update. There's the ISG version, there's the Home Assistant container version, and there's the Home Assistant service pack. So, and also the Zigbee version. So there's three different areas of firmwares that could be updated. Now, originally you needed to actually copy this onto a USB stick and plug it into the device before you can upgrade. But now I see that when there's a new version available, it does pop up a little um, reminder here. You can press the button and it will automatically download the update for you. Well, this has been one of the most difficult product reviews that I've ever had to do. And I've actually gone back and re-recorded the final section of this video, giving my reflections on this product. And the reason for that is that I've done some more testing on this device and I've also done some research looking at other reviews and some other comments that people are making about this device. What I'm finding with this device is that it is really a beta product. It still has a lot of bugs inside of it. And I would definitely recommend checking it out quite carefully. Um, you can do some basic things through the front ISG, but there are some real limitations and it's not that easy to set up. The instructions are quite difficult to follow. And yes, I did reach out to Lincoln Link and they did uh, respond promptly, but there's no Discord or group of people that you can actually go to to get updates and support on this device. So I would definitely think carefully, check it out, do your own research and make sure that you're happy with this. Personally, I would recommend going for more, something like a Home Assistant Green and set it up yourself and I think you'll learn a lot more. Anyway, that's all for now. Hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.